Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Into my heart. Floods of joy on my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have ceased from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart, and my sins, which were many, are now washed away. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart, and no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscured. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death now for me Since Jesus came into my heart And the gates of the city beyond I can see Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. In the ball. There is a flower in the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise. Butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it ceases. Something God alone can see. 
There's a song in every silence Seeking word and melody There's a dawn in every darkness Bringing hope to you and me From the past will come the future What it holds a mystery Unrevealed until it sees them Something God alone can see In the end is our beginning In our time infinity In our doubt there is believing In our life eternity in our death, the resurrection, at the last, the victory, unrevealed until it sees them, something God alone can see. And that was even shape notes, too. Did you notice that? <laughs> All right, so mighty to say. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Save he can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever Author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Take me as you find me All my fears and failures Again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. For the glory of the risen King Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave. Thank you. I did notice those shape notes. Yeah. Now tell us how to sing with them. Yeah. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> Man after my own heart. The hymn of promise, as a good segue, we had... Uh, uh, Roy and Tracy Udi entered the most wonderful of uh, stages of life this week. They became grandparents. I recommend it highly. And uh, uh, Amelia, Ray, Charlotte, Conrad, Lean, Franklin, Martin were born May the 2nd, a little after midnight. Uh, Charlotte, uh, Amelia, uh, Amelia is going to uh, weigh five, six, outweighed her brother who was at six. Six, six, and six, five. All right. But she was uh, uh, an ounce bigger. Yeah. 
I don't know how much they, how, how long they were, but they were long enough. All right, just beautiful way. We'll get some pictures up for next week here. So, congratulations, wonderful. Yeah, clap. At the 11 o'clock service this morning, we will be honoring the uh, Child Development Center, and uh, we're going to, there's a, a PowerPoint at that. Can we play that at the end of this service? Is it possible? So we'll, do, we'll do that. Uh, anyway, uh, remember that. How many of y'all uh, have been to the, uh, are graduates of the CDC, went to the CDC, worked at the CDC, or just love the CDC? <laughs> Raise your hand. That's everybody. Yeah, we have a wonderful ministry of our congregation, and we appreciate all the work uh, that is done up there. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from uh, the 116th Psalm. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, and therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of shoal laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish, and I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, precious in the sight of the Lord and the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. And then the most marvelous of resurrection stories, I think, is the one on the road to Emmaus. To actually, look, read this one from the book. Beginning with verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in those days, these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. There was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. And they came near the village where they were going. He walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, 
they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his word. And may the bread of life be broken for us this morning as we break our hearts and spirits to others. May we pray. Our Father, we are thankful and grateful that we can come together this day. We're thankful for the beauty that is in it. We're thankful for the fellowship and love that we experience here in this place and that we share in your world. We pray that we would know something about what it means to walk with you and that we would see you, that we would know where you are. Open our eyes and our hearts. Our hearts are troubled by events in the world. We continue to remember our dear friends in the Ukraine and the terrible situation that is there. We remember some others in our own land that have been stricken by this weather. We know that you are there. We know that your love, your comfort, your strength, determination is in all these places. We're thankful that we can help. And help we will. Again, open our hearts and our minds to who you are. And may we truly know you. In the most loving, precious name that we know, the name of Jesus Christ, who is the risen Lord, we do pray. Amen. Sing an amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
Shall we pray? Our Father, you, you have shown us what it means to give, to give of ourselves. And this is what we do this day. We give out of the abundance of your grace. For you have graced us, you have gifted us. We are thankful. And now we return some of those gifts. We do so because it is a good thing to do. We do so because we share what we have. We do so because we believe in your kingdom and how we might build it. Bless these are gifts. These are our offerings. In your name we do pray. Amen. Hill where your blood was spilled from my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. I tempted and tried human the word became flesh for my sin and death now you're in everything I once held dear I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me. to the cross to your heart to your heart lead me to your heart lead me to your heart where your love poured out bring me to my knees Lord I lay me down rid me of myself I belong to you oh lead me lead me to the cross Yeah, very beautiful. Thank you. This is the most wonderful story that Luke tells us. I love the Gospels and the different perspectives. They each give us a, a different way of looking at Jesus and who Jesus is and how Jesus is. Luke begins differently. It is in Luke we 
we have the shepherds. It is in Luke, we have the most marvelous stories of the prodigal. And it is in Luke, we, we have the sermons on the plains. Matthew has the mountains, Luke has the plains. Uh, Luke, uh, uh, Jesus in Luke is very much reminding us that the most important thing is what, is our, what do we do with what we have? What are our possessions and what are the things that possesses us? He talks more about that than anything else. He actually does that in all the Gospels, but in Luke it's very, very, very clear. One thing that Baptists have gotten right, uh, and we see that as we, we look at Luke, is the importance of food. Uh, Any time that they're eating, it's an important time. Any time that uh, they're, they're serving food, that there's something is going on. We've got that right. We, we know how to do that. We do that well. well I don't know that they had the a good a barbecue as we did, but well, especially since they were Jewish, that's another story. <laughs> but uh, we got the food part right. This story combines all those elements in a wonderful way. Cleopas and his companion... Uh, which really, there's a little, uh, that's a little flag, a good flag. That's uh, Cleopas and his wife. That's just a very kind way, uh, a, 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 a Mideastern respect. You would say the male name back then, and the companion would be the wife. But you wouldn't mention her name. I mean, you do that, uh, not a, just a different society. So Cleopas and probably his wife, are traveling back home. They're going to Emmaus, about seven miles. I like to look at that in terms of races. That's a, almost a t- that's a little over a ten k. So this is what they're doing, yeah, they're, they're, but they're walking it. That's that's a good thing. It was, should take them about a. I don't know. It takes them as long as it takes them. It would be like walking from here to the old church, just about. Yeah. Which I don't want to run that route right now, but uh, that's where they're going. They're on this road. Their lives have been changed already. And, and you see that the, they're walking on this road and somebody comes up to them. That's sort of the neat thing, you know, when we're, not, when we're in cars, you don't, uh, people come up to you, even if their windows roll down, you don't usually talk to them unless they want something. But there's something intimate going on here. And uh, when, when you're running or jogging or walking and people come up, you, you talk to each other. Some of the time, anyway. And this stranger comes up and uh, he asks, you know, what's going on? I won't say he says what's happening, but uh, about that. And and, and they turn to him in this look of incredulity. They say, where you been? Are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's happened these last few days? What world are you living in? It's really not a polite thing to say, but it is so human. You say, yeah, what world are you living on? And then the stranger, and they tell the stranger, oh, how we had hoped that he was the one. Uh, uh, Oh, we had such hope. That's sometimes the the most saddest of languages, isn't it? We had such hopes. Our hopes were so high. And and if our hopes were so high and they're not fulfilled, what does that mean? They were disappointed. And why wouldn't they be disappointed? All the very things that they had hoped for, all the very things that they had prayed for, we had hoped that He was the Messiah. We had hoped that he was the son of the living God. We had hoped that this is the one that had been promised. And and we just don't know if it's so. We just don't know. So we heard these strange stories. Some of the women said this and that. And some of the other disciples went and they found it so. But we don't know. And so the stranger comes and shares with them the word that he knows. It was getting dark 
or late. And they offered, this, they, said that they were at her home. The stranger asked if he needed to go on the own. They said, no, come in. Come in and have supper with us. Come, let us share what we have with you. And they did. And they said then, he broke the bread. And when he broke the bread, they recognized that it was Jesus. And then he disappeared. There's another lesson and sermon in that too. And so, they immediately, they had finally got to their journey. They said, we've got to go back to Jerusalem. So they walked back. And they found the disciples gathered again. And they said, we have seen the Lord. And oh, how our hearts burn. This is a story of the church. It's a story of life. And it's a story of what it means to be the church. And it's a story of what God has done in Jesus Christ. John Dominic Cross has said, it is a, the greatest parable of the church. What does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to follow the risen Lord? What does it mean to know the risen Lord? What does it mean to call Him Lord and Savior of our life? What is it that we are to do and how are we to do it? How do we know Jesus? We find Him on the road to Emmaus. They're walking along. Again, the stranger comes up. They said later, our hearts burn. Crossan says, you know, that's the way it is a lot of times. When you read God's Word, when you talk about God's Word, you get a glimpse, you get a little bit of an understanding, you get a feeling that Jesus is around. But they didn't know it. They didn't take it. They didn't see it. They didn't really understand it. And you can talk a whole lot about Jesus. Trust me, a lot of people talk a lot about Jesus. A lot of people talk about a lot of everything. And then do very little about anything. So you, you could talk about Jesus and you can see and you can understand just a little bit about Jesus. But when did they really know Jesus? When did Jesus come into their heart and into their life? When did Jesus change everything to them? When were their eyes lifted? It began when they did what Jesus always wants the church to do. He said, come in. Come in and eat with us. Come in and dine with us. Come in to share the meal that we have. Come in and you will be a part of who we are. Come into our homes. Come into our life. Come and stay with us. And that's what the church has to say to the world. That's what the church has. We, we bring food today. That's it. I was hungry and you... We understand and we recognize and we see who Jesus is when He comes, when we give, when we are in this world. When they open their homes to this stranger, they saw Jesus. And they had what they had, communion. They shared the bread. They shared the life. You see, Cleopas and his companion, his wife or whatever. When they opened themselves up, they knew the Lord. They knew who He was. They knew how He was. And they knew this was the one. And they had to do something about it. They went back and told the others, we have seen the Lord. 
He is alive. Isn't that what the church has to do today? We have to welcome people into our house. Everybody. We have to welcome the stranger. We have to welcome the unloving. We have to welcome all of those that have a place in our house. And we share with them the supper that we have. And we share with this world the food that we have because that's who we are and how we are and what we are. And it is then, it's then that we see Jesus. It is then we see Jesus. When you were naked and you clothed me, when you're hungry and you fed me, when I was in prison and you visited me, when I was sick and you came to me, we see Jesus. For there he is. And by the grace of God, the reciprocal of that is also true. The world will see Jesus in us. And that's what it's all about. That's where we are. We're walking this road of life. And we can talk all we want to about faith. We can dot every I. We can cross every T. We can do all of those things. We can argue every wonderful argument about everything under the sun that we want to argue about faith. But the point is always going to come, are we going to practice Are we going to give of ourselves and our possessions? Are we going to give of our life? And when we give of our life, we will see Jesus. For Jesus is alive. And the power of that love knows no end. Talk about it. All you want. But when you start living it, when you start giving it, when you start seeing everybody in this world with a little different eye, then you will know Jesus. And you will know He is risen. May we pray. Our Father, we serve this day a risen Lord. We have seen him in the breaking of the bread. We have known him in the hospitality. Oh, Lord, help us to be hospitable. Help us to welcome you into our hearts, into our lives, and to welcome others. Help us to see with a new vision. Give us the strength to be who we are and how we are and what we need to do. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence even here this day. For we see you. We thank you. Again and again and again. And now we will live our thanks out in our lives. In your name we do pray. Amen. Open our eyes. Perfect. Open our eyes. May we stand and sing our hymn of invitation. to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. We seated. As you have done it to the very least of these, you have done it to me. That's the whole point of it. We're reminded of all the people that were displaced in the New Testament and how Jesus welcomed every one of them. And one of the people, 
uh, groups of people that, that were the least thought of were the children, which seems so odd to us because we practically uh, worship our children and at least our grandchildren, you know, they're the only perfect ones. Uh, but uh, uh, in this society, the children had no voice. But Jesus said they have a place. We must care for them. And we must take care of them. And, and one of the wonderful things we've done as a congregation over the years has been the, the ministry and the work of the Child Development Center. Let's see the... Yeah, but uh, you, you, you're touching the controls, whatever you put up. We're, we're going to talk about, we're going to do blood first. All right, blood first, then CDC. All right. Donna will be pleased. September 17, 2010, my daughter was diagnosed with leukemia. She was at risk of dying immediately. My wife is a cancer survivor, and she was hospitalized with those low uh, white cell counts and was in need of a transfusion. I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia as a child. This is my grandson, Carter, my daughter, Mandy, and my son-in-law, John. To me, as a mother, watching my child receive something that could very potentially save his life and did for two years is amazing. And not having to worry about it being there was a relief. We had hope to the very end with Carter. And it was because we knew the blood was always there. Going to that team, it's the blood I received that saved my life. Um, sorry to be for my kids because of that, I probably wouldn't be here. Without a doubt, giving blood saves lives. 55 blood transfusions later. Um, my daughter, Justine, is alive and healthy because of donations like yours. That's why I need to donate. The Community Blood Center is not just for the patients. It's for the family, too. I need blood transfusions because it helps me stay in, stay in school and stay home, stay healthy. Often when cancer patients are going through chemotherapy, their white blood cell counts will get depleted. They'll end up in the hospital, and sometimes they have to have transfusions. If you could save a life, would you? We see a lot of bad traumas and a lot of bad medical issues where people need blood donations. Giving blood is easy. The number one reason people don't donate is because they haven't been asked. I'm asking. People say the number one reason why they don't donate blood is because they're not asked. I'm asking you right now.
So we will recognize and honor our CDC at the 11 o'clock service. And uh, Ann Benfield, the director of Cooperative, uh, Cabarrus Cooperative, Partnership for Children, I'm going to get it right. Uh, she can tell you exactly how important these first five years are. And the most important years of a, of a child's life, those first five years developmentally, and uh, what the CDC does to help uh, give the children the very best uh, environment just says everything. What a wonderful ministry. You want to add anything to that, Bruce? All right. Any more, we'll say more about the blood. More night, four to seven. You do not sign up or come. Yeah. All right. And you've all been asked now. All right. Uh, Bruce is the deacon of the week. Uh, the deadline for the youth to sign up for Caswell is today. Uh, if you have not been getting the church emails, we switched uh, uh, mail providers. You need to email me because uh, some things didn't get ported over. I like that word, ported. It's okay. Anyway, if you, but it didn't do any good if you didn't get them. So if you're not getting the emails from the church, uh, email me, esairs at vnet.net, and we'll make sure that you're on the list. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know who's on and who, we know who's on, but the, uh, emails and names aren't, this, you know, we can't figure out who you are. Uh, oh, that'll preach too. Uh, anyway, help us out. Uh, email me and we'll make sure that uh, you're list. Turn your barbecue and money uh, to Bruce so Bruce can uh, give us a, a final count and amount soon. Uh, VBS, all the stuff we need. We need uh, stuff for rain. Uh, paper products, laundry detergent, dishwashing detergent, toothpaste, shampoo, uh, deodorant, and cleaning supplies. Today was also food for the first, uh, but um, if you forgot that because we didn't have the newsletter this week. Uh, we'll take the food anytime you want to bring it. Bring it next Sunday. Uh, a good thing to do. Anything else? Did it? Bruce? No deacons mean today. All right. In our normal meet. We also have the Afton. I love. What a wonderful church. The ladies are going to Afton Tavern. We need an account for the ladies that are going to Afton Tavern May the, uh, May 17th at 6 p.m. See Lurie today. What a wonderful. <laughs> Don't you love this church? <laughs> it's fun. See, it's about food. <laughs> All right. Anything else? We're glad that you'll stay for the benediction. It's so good to see you. We're on a normal schedule. Again, uh, the Joy Club, uh, the senior, uh, uh, which is anybody that thinks they're getting old, uh, they're having their annual breakfast uh, brunch, uh, country ham brunch with sausage. Uh, they, they eat at 11, so that really is brunch. <laughs> uh, so come on out. Uh, even if you just want to be a mascot for the day, come on out and have fun. It's a, it's a good time. We got some good good cooks. And, uh, it's fun. So, blood pressure checks will be done afterwards. Now go out into the world, because out in the world is where you're going to see Jesus. When you invite that world into your life, you will see Jesus when you share His love. When you share who you are. When you share what you are, when you know that you are a child of God, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Go and live like it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. You've been watching and listening to the morning worship service at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, delivered the sermon this morning. Music was uh, led by the Reverend Steve Harrell and also Lindsay McGill. Uh, and, of course, McGill Baptist Church, 5300 Popper Tent Road, the corner of George Lyles Parkway, exit 54 off of I-85. You are always welcome at McGill Baptist Church. We hope you got a blessing from today's service. More information, you can call the church office at 704-788-1180. Again, 704-788-1180. Or visit our website, mcgillbaptist.org. Thank you for joining us at McGill Baptist Church.